Yeah, you really didn't think that was this little thing playing Doom, did you? Would be nice, but yeah, there's just no way. Hey, welcome back, guys. So some of you are probably wondering what this little thing is I have here. Believe it or not, this is an actual x86 PC from 2010, made by a company called XI3. XI3 is no longer in business, but it was interesting to research the company and their products. Started in 2010 in Salt Lake City, Utah, the XI3 Corporation was actually a subsidiary of another company called Isis Technologies. Isis Technologies is a 100% woman-owned defense contractor that was created in 2002 and they still exist today. XI3 has some pretty ambitious goals and some pretty optimistic claims about the products they would be producing. From what I could gather, this was the first product that they released, the X5A or the 5 Series. It's a very small extruded aluminum enclosure measuring just under 4 inches with a dual-core Athlon 64X2 CPU, 2 gigabytes of DDR2, integrated graphics, and an MSATA SSD with either Windows 7 Pro or OpenSUSE on a modular layout consisting of three separate boards. When these launched, they retailed for right around $900, which was pretty steep at the time for what you get, but XI3 justified the price by pointing out the low power consumption, just under 30 watts for this particular model. And while they received some praise from tech sites at the time and garnered attention at the trade shows, it doesn't seem that they were a hit with home PC users and were mostly relegated to use in healthcare and other industries for light workloads. A year after the launch, the price was slashed to $499 and XI3 announced a Kickstarter campaign for two new models, the X3A and the X7A, along with a Chromium-based model. The 3-series was a very low-powered, energy-efficient model using only 15 watts, and the 7-series was a more powerful model with an AMD Trinity APU and 8 gigabytes of DDR3. Then rumor began to circulate of a steam box, fueled by the fact that Valve contributed to the development and cost of the XI3 piston, which from what I could tell was pretty much a 7-series. It was touted for its gaming abilities, but being powered by a Trinity APU, that also seemed rather ambitious and overly optimistic. By the time the piston was released in 2013 with a price tag of $1,000, Valve and XI3 had parted ways, and the supposed Steam box was never realized. In the same year, XI3 released another low-powered and even smaller platform known as the Zero Pro. Also running on just 15 watts, it featured a dual-core 1.65 GHz CPU with an 80 shader core GPU and an MSATA drive up to 1 terabyte, and at a retail price of $399, and it was Judging by all the specs, a 3 series and a small aluminum case. From all of my research, 2014 was the end of XI3. The Kickstarter campaigns failed to reach the goals, Valve pulled the partnership, and home PC users were not in a rush to purchase this PC. By 2017, the company was ordered to liquidate and auction off all property, along with claims of some shadiness and the spending of investors' money, among other things. I'm going to leave some links below so you guys can check that out because I didn't get too far into that. So what I have here is a 5 Series. I have the X13, X5A. I wasn't able to find a 7 Series or a piston as nice as that would have been. And I think if I did, I think the price probably would have been ridiculous. But, you know, we have what we have. We're going to take a look at this one and uh, we're going to take it apart. We're going to take a look at the inside, check out the layout. And, um, you know, maybe we'll load an operating system on it and check it out a little closer. All right, so let's take a closer look at this thing, shall we? Here you can see the logo. And the logo's upside down right now. But with the logo the right way, if you look back at your at your rear panel, that's upside down. So something's I don't know if this something's gotta be flipped around on there. Uh here's a mounting bracket here, and I think this has several different mounting brackets, so you can mount it several different ways. Uh these are also aluminum as well, or or at least metal, uh these chrome grills on the ends here. The whole thing is kind of cool. You got this anodized extruded aluminum housing on there. Um, can't wait to get in the inside and take a look at the inside here. Apparently, the XI3, the three is for a three board computer. So you've got, you know, three boards that lock together to 
basically make up the computer and the plan was they were supposed to be interchangeable so you could you know upgrade and swap boards out uh, let's take a look at the back at the io we've got a gigabit ethernet port here uh, you've got your audio in out microphone display port dual link dvi and vga uh, right here you got your power connector it takes a laptop style uh, ac adapter and you can see 19 i don't know if you read it under 19 volts 3.3 amps power button is that little button right there uh, we've got six usb 2.0 ports and two eSATA ports and this one looks like it's dedicated for usb probably so you can access uh like bios when you're booting up all right this is what it looks like when you've got stuff plugged into the back it looks a little congested back there but i mean i guess if you have this set in behind you know something or under a shelf i mean i suppose you could you know manage your cables a little bit better this is just sitting on a wide open desk right now all right out of its enclosure you can see this thing just kind of slides right out of there uh, we can take a closer look at how this thing is put together and it appears that you've got like a bottom board here that's got your memory on it there um, also i believe the cpu is probably underneath there but you got these two other boards that socket into the sides of that so you do got your three boards uh, Let's go ahead and see if we can break this down and take a look at all the different parts of it, though. Right, it looks like this is the only thing holding this back cover on are these two little nuts right here. Yeah, all right. The back cover pops right off. Yeah, let me get a good look down inside over there. All right. Uh, let's see what I want to do next. Um, I think maybe pop one of these boards off here. All right, it sockets in just like a just like a PCI card or something. 2010-2011 Isis Technologies, and remember what I said Isis is the uh, all woman-owned defense contractor. Uh, that's the that uh, XI3 is a subsidiary of. You see right there, Isis Technologies Incorporated. And I think this is mainly just power supply and uh, Ethernet. Uh, these right here, I think it's just a pass through for your video. Pretty interesting though. All right, so we got another one we can take off here. It's interesting, there's a USB port right there. USB SATA header that says, uh, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's pop it off. Let's see, that one came off a little easier. Yeah, this is where our fan plugs in. And I believe this is, that's, no, that's your Southbridge chipset right there. It even says Southbridge right on it. So there's Southbridge. I'm not sure why there is a USB and another that's marked USB SATA, and that's not marked anything. That's really interesting, the way this thing is laid out. Yeah, once again, you see ISIS Technologies Incorporated. All right. So, this board here, this looks like it's got the system RAM on it right there. Some Hynix chips. Um... I imagine, yeah, there's a CPU socket. You can see it right there. So I wonder if that's replaceable. There's more memory here. Let me uh, let me see what I got to do to get in here to the CPU. I wonder if I can get down to it. Uh, 
take this fan off first. All right, fan's a little clogged up with crap. And it looks like I'm gonna need a smaller bit. All right, T5 seems to fit. It's kind of an interesting, oh, this is a really interesting design here. So let's kind of just clip over the edge of the board and the heat sink screws down into it to pull it tight to the board. That is interesting. I kind of like that. These screws come out. Yep, they come out. All right, I don't want to lose them. All right. Probably not going to pop right off of there either. Get those clips out. Ah, there we go. And look, it doesn't have pace. It's got a pad on there, which uh, they didn't do a very good job centering that pad on there at all. But let's see, we have got. Yep, Athlon 64X2, 3400 plus. And that right there would be the North Bridge with the uh, integrated graphics. The uh, Radeon HD 3200 graphics would be built into that. Uh, that's a 7 something chipset. I don't remember which chipset that was. So that's a close look at that. Let me get the thermal pad back on there so I don't lose the fucking thing. And the interesting thing is this CPU is absolutely socketed in there. Look at that. So I wonder what other AM2 CPUs can I put in here? Um, I'm sure there's power constraints to consider, but uh, all right. yeah, we'll have to try out a different processor on here as well but anyways that's the way this thing comes apart or goes together or however you want to look at it uh quality control doesn't look like it was very good on putting these thermal pads on there but the thing didn't seem to run hot so all right what i find really interesting about this is this is from 2010 2011 uh, this one was probably built like 2011 and they chose to use uh it's like an AM2, something much older, an Athlon 64X2 3400 Plus. I mean, you can even see right there, this is a CPU from 2005 uh, with a 730E chipset, 780E chip, sorry, 780E chipset uh, with the integrated Radeon HD 3200 graphics. Um, and being at the F socket AM2, this only has DDR2, uh, two gigs of it. Um, and the, uh, South bridge on here, that's a 710, I believe SB 710. I'll go look. Yes. I just had to go look 710, uh, chipset SB 710 and a 780E North bridge with the integrated HD 3200 graphics. So, um, uh, definitely not a powerhouse, definitely not top of the line hardware for the, for the year that this came out. Uh, but it's still a, a really cool design if you think about it. Uh, this one right here has got your CPU. This has your memory, all your system RAM. Uh, it's also got your uh, integrated graphics and the uh, dedicated memory for that, plus a, some kind of controller there uh, and more of your system memory. So that's all on one board here. And then this one here has got the uh, SB710 Southbridge which is the, you know, basically controls I.O. and this has all your I.O. Uh, really, really cool. And then the other card here, this one looks like it's got, I mean, it's got your, you know, the power in and your power button. Uh, and it looks like this is all power, power circuitry here. So uh, along with Ethernet, um, it looks like an Ethernet controller there. Um, and then the video on here, I think it's just, this is just pass through video. I do like the way this all just fits together and you know had they used more modern hardware i think it might have caught on a little better too one thing i am really interested though is if this can be it, it, is this because uh, i know they have a custom bios on here i'm really interested in knowing if if the cpu 
can be swapped. Is this one whitelisted? Um, what's the uh, power, you know, the, the maximum power draw that you can put on this with a CPU? I mean, will this take a 6,000 plus? Can I put a Sempron in here for, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm really, really curious if I can put a different seat. Matter of fact, you know what? We may find that out right now. I might go ahead and just swap that out with something just just to see if it, if it can be done. All right, so I just swapped in a 5000B Athlon 64X2 5000B. So let's see what happens. All right, here we go, 5000B. Turn it on, we have power. Boom. There we go. Athlon 5000B, 2.6 gigahertz. So yeah, it's already way faster. I wish I had a uh, first gen Phenom. That'd be pretty sweet to throw a Phenom like a 9550 or something in there and see if that would work. Well, I don't know if you can hear me over the fan, but with the 5000B, uh, I managed to get this far on my Windows 10 install, so I'm not sure if the issue was this CPU or if it just happened to get too hot, because with that 3400 plus in there, I mean, every, I felt everything, nothing felt warm. I mean, it felt a little warm, but nothing really felt overly hot. Uh, with this 5000B in there, of course, the heat sinks was, it, the heat sink was cooking. So I got this fan on there, and uh, since I've put that CPU in there with this fan, I mean, I've had no problem. So I might, uh, I might just go through and uh, continue to test this out a little bit. All right, so even with this fan on there, which you can hear the RPM of that fan, that's a pretty, that's a pretty blowy fan. I mean, it's blowing a lot of air out through that fan, which is actually blowing in. Um, just on the Windows 10 desktop of that 5000B, at 100% usage with uh, pretty high temperatures on it. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not so sure this 5000B is going to be able to stay in there. I'm going to have to find something that's uh, uh, a little bit better. Um, I might throw a 3400 plus back in there just to see if everything will work now. Um, you know, I don't know what the issue was before, but yeah, it seems to be working now. So, let's see what I can do about this. So, my goal was to just uh, try out Windows 10 on here and try out maybe like a, a browser, YouTube. Um, I got the browser up on YouTube, but the problem is that the uh, CPU sits at 100% all the time, no matter what. There's all kinds of uh, background shit going on in Windows here constantly that just uh, pushes this little dual core up to 100%. So I'm going to give it a little more time. The other thing is these temperatures don't really fluctuate all that much. Um, you know, so if it just sits at 77 and 88 for now, then uh, uh, I'll just leave it like set up like this for now. And uh, at least until we can get YouTube tried out on here, and then I'm probably going to find a different CPU, one that's not, one with uh, a much lower TDP than this 5000B. But for now, I'm waiting for these goddamn Windows processes to stop and uh, stop eating up the CPU so I can actually try some other stuff. All right, finally got there. Just had to uh, go to Group Policy Editor and just disable a ton of shit and. Uh, now you can see we're a little bit more manageable. 46% of our two gigs of RAM is being used up and uh, uh, with Task Manager, uh, HW Monitor, and uh, Microsoft Edge being open, we're using up 18% of our CPU right now. So let's go let's find a, uh, uh, let's find a video here we can watch. Just any video. I don't think we've got no speakers plugged in, so I don't have to worry about sound. All right, and this is 720p. So I'm not sure how well we're going to do here. But you can see our core temperatures and our uh, and one core is about 10 degrees higher than the other, and the same was with the other CPU. And I think I wonder if that's because of that thermal pad not being lined up correctly. 
Uh, you see, we do got a little bit of drop frames, but not too bad. Let's go to full screen here and see what happens. Yeah, well, it's not perfect. So I think we're not going to be able to really run Windows 10 very well on this, no matter what, no matter what we do. And I think I've got to get a far more efficient CPU in there, uh, one with a much lower TDP. Now we might as well get a Cinebench score while we're here too, or at least uh, have to see what that does with our temperatures here. All right, we end up with a final score at 83, which, you know, didn't expect much from it. Uh, I guess we'll run it with the fan on here. And our temperature did, uh, on core number one, did get up to 85. So uh, that wasn't too terrible. But as you can see now, our usage is dropping. So is our temperature. Uh, but I still think this CPU is a little too hot for this. And if we just go to idle on the desktop here, let's see. As you can see, it looks like um, we're still using a lot of fucking CPU here in Windows. And see, that's the problem with Windows is a lot of times so many background processes you don't notice it on a modern CPU, but on an older CPU, uh, it, it's it's way too much. But we're getting down there now. I like I said, I stopped a lot of a, a lot of uh, processes that run. Uh, I wonder what happens if I disconnect that fan there. Let's see what the temperatures do. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just let them stabilize right there then. Uh, but, yeah, I think I need to get a bigger SSD for it. And I do need to get rid of this 5000B in here. And uh, maybe I'll try the 3400 plus again. Or maybe I'll try something else, see what I got. But for now, I'm going to get this uh, get this all shut down and disconnected. 3400 plus is installed back in there. Uh, as you can see, we have Cinebench running. And... Temperatures are looking good now. So I think that the uh, cooling system that they have on here is uh, probably perfect for a 35 watt TDP CPU, but you get much oh, much you get much higher than that, and I think it just overwhelms it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have to stick with that. And it's not like uh, I mean a CPU, a better CPU would benefit it probably. You know, like online YouTube stuff like that when you're opening up browsers. Uh, but then again, you're gonna be hammered by the lack of of RAM. There's only two gigabytes of DDR2, so that's going to hurt you there. Um, as far as games and anything like that, I mean, you know, you're you're looking at games from, I don't know, 2004 and older, if you're lucky, uh, and probably at lower resolutions with that HD 3200. So, um, you know, when it comes to that, the, the CPU doesn't really matter. Uh, the No matter how bad of a CPU this thing has, the uh, iGPU is, is far worse. But when it comes for the browser... You know, to the browser, it'd be nice if you could put a, be a better CPU in here and increase the RAM. But, um, yeah, that's not going to happen. So, uh, there's there's no way you can increase the RAM in here. And uh, the thermal solution that they have on here just does not... And you can see we're wrapping up right now with a score of 62. And we peaked at 56 and 61 on the CPU cores. So, yeah, not too shabby. The XI3 5 Series, what the hell do I think about this little thing? Well, I mean, it's a pretty cool uh, marketing idea. You know, the power of X, the, the power of Cube. Unleash the power of the pyramid. Uh, whatever their, their marketing shtick was on that. But um, it's a shame they just used, you know, really outdated hardware on something. In 2010, they're using a CPU that was made in 2005, so... Uh, that that's kind of a off-putting right there in itself. You know, you probably should have gone with something a little more current, even if it's for a prototype. So I don't know. Uh, you know, you can't put anything too powerful in here. Uh, as far as a CPU, you've got to stay very low on TDP because of the cooling that that comes with it. Um, it's got it's very limited on VRAM. It's like I said, it's got two gigabytes of DDR2, and that's it. Uh, the integrated. Uh, graphics in there the, the 30 radeon hd 3200 is just pitiful um but even today i mean i guess it does have still have a use i mean this is youtube 720p 
it'll play at 720p browses the internet very very slowly um, you could probably play some older games 2000 to 2004 on it if you load Windows XP on it which is one thing I may try I may try to put Windows XP on here but we'll do, save that for another day alrighty guys let me know what you think of this little thing and uh, if you have any ideas of you know what I can do with this when I get it back together let me know um, but anyways you guys take care I'll see you on the next one